Hi, it's Katrina. From standing stones underwater to a wealthy Spanish princess, here are nine amazing and curious discoveries. Number 9. Spanish Stonehenge Sometime between 4,000 and 7,000 years ago, ancient people living in what is now Spain erected the Dolmen of Guadalperal, a megalithic monument better known as the Spanish Stonehenge. The site consists of around 140 boulders arranged in a concentric circle and was likely used as a temple and a cemetery. Sadly, the dolmens were deliberately submerged in 1963 with the creation of the Val de Cañas Reservoir, leaving the area's younger residents curious about the landmark that their elders spoke about. Sometimes when the water level dropped, they could see the stones peeking out from the water. A drought in 2019 fully exposed the dolmen for the first time in decades. As awe-inspiring as Spanish Stonehenge was for those who had longed their entire lives to see it, the site was also alarming. The megaliths, constructed from highly porous stone, showed obvious signs of erosion, cracking, and other damage. Recognizing their historical importance, locals called on officials to remove and preserve the dolmen. Like Stonehenge, the megaliths formed a sun temple and a burial ground. They seemed to have a religious but also economic purpose, being at one of the few points of the river where it was possible to cross. So it was a sort of trading hub, said Ángel Castaño, head of the local cultural association. There are lingering mysteries surrounding Spanish Stonehenge, including the meanings of some of the megaliths' engravings. Even more alarmingly, the site's future also remains uncertain, as it appears that citizens' repeated outcries to save the site have gone unanswered by the Spanish government. Number 8. Disappeared Nikkei Wanting to form a community of their own, Japanese Canadians, or Nikkei, settled together in a secluded section of British Columbia's North Shore Mountains during the first half of the 20th century. For some time, the quaint settlement thrived, featuring houses arranged in rows, a water reservoir, a garden, a bathhouse, and a shrine. It provided Japanese immigrants and their children an opportunity to preserve their culture and escape the discrimination they faced in mainstream society in the Vancouver area, where they were barred from voting, practicing law, and becoming civil servants. The community lived in much desired privacy and relative secrecy until everyone appears to have simply vanished. Archaeologist Bob Muckle, who learned of the site in 2004 from a retired forester who had found artifacts there, spent several weeks excavating every year with a team of hand-picked students. They've uncovered over 1,000 items, including rice bowls, sake bottles, parts of a lantern, pocket watches, ceramics, buttons, teapots, and a cedar platform that was once likely the shrine. The team also identified the locations of 14 small homes, which likely housed between 40 and 50 people altogether. Muckle found documentation showing that a Japanese businessman once held the title to a parcel of land next to the village, where a logging camp was located. Although the area's trees were largely harvested by 1924, he believes that the secret community's residents remained there longer. In fact, Muckle believes that people remained in the village until World War II, even though he admittedly has not unearthed any artifacts dating past 1920. Regardless of when the villagers left, one thing is clear, they left in a hurry. Chances are, Muckle says they were arrested or sent to road camps amid World War II-era anti-Japanese sentiments. Number 7. Lost Beatles Footage When the Beatles performed their song Paperback Writer on BBC's Top of the Pops television program in June 1966, the network failed to record the show. It was the band's only performance on the show, and until early 2019, it was widely believed that the live appearance was lost to history. That year, an 11-second clip from the show surfaced from a collector in Mexico, who acquired the footage from a family from Liverpool. Shortly thereafter, news surfaced that one Beatles fan named David Chandler had recorded part of the show by aiming his 8mm camera at the television screen, capturing 92 seconds of the performance. The video sat in Chandler's attic for the next half century until he handed it over to Kaleidoscope after hearing about a campaign to recover lost performances. Both clips are silent, but Kaleidoscope remastered the footage and synced it to the song's audio, bringing modern-day fans as close as they'll probably ever get to experiencing the performance firsthand. The show was filmed during the last year the Beatles toured. They reunited later in 1969 when they emerged on a London rooftop unannounced and gave their final live performance. And now for number 6, 
But first, wanted to say a big thank you to all of our subscribers for supporting this channel and coming to hang out in our corner of the internet. Big shout out to Mayra Reyes and Jennifer Dimer. Thank you. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe before you leave. We have lots of videos coming up. Number 6. Christ Mocked While clearing an elderly woman's house for sale in the town of Compagne, located north of Paris, an auctioneer named Philomene Wolfe noticed a valuable Renaissance painting that had hung inconspicuously on the wall for years. But even she did not suspect that the artwork was created by the 13th century painter Cimabue. He was also called Cenni di Peppo, or Cenni di Peppi, and was quite a master. The painting depicts the mocking of Jesus Christ that occurred in the hours leading up to his crucifixion. Incredibly, it was in good condition, despite having been placed over a hot plate. Who knows how long they'd been cooking right under it? You rarely see something of such quality, Wolf told The Guardian, adding, I immediately thought it was a work of Italian primitivism, but I didn't imagine it was a Cimabue. At first glance, the painting is nothing special. Measuring just 7.9 by 9.4 inches, it's rather small, but thanks to Wolf's keen eye for masterpieces, it did not end up going to the dump, where anything the woman could not sell was going to go. She recommended that the client have the artwork appraised by experts, estimating its potential sale value at somewhere between $360,000 and $480,000. As it turned out, even Wolf's guess about the painting's value was low. The piece, titled Christ Mocked, sold at auction for an astounding $26.6 million to US-based Chilean collectors who specialize in Italian masterpieces. But the French government was keen to get its hands on the artwork, and its culture ministry blocked the painting's export under the condition that the country has 30 months to raise enough money to buy it. Number 5. Toad Mural The ancient Caral civilization is considered the oldest known civilization in the Americas and one of the first civilizations in the world. Archaeologists have unearthed a very curious mural from the lost civilization, showing a creature of some sort with its arms reaching toward the head of a man. Found at the site of Bichama, it's a miracle it's even still around. It's believed to be about 3,800 years old and is actually a toad wrapping its arms around the man's head. The depiction represents the announcement of the arrival of water, archaeologist Tatiana Abad said during a news conference about the discovery, adding that the mural talks about the importance of water in times of crisis and the reflections that we can create from them. Excavations at Bichama began in 2007 and are ongoing. Scientists hope to learn more about this little-known lost civilization through the structures and artifacts they left behind. So far, it's clear that the Caral were meticulous urban planners with advanced architectural skills for the time. There have been some remains of human sacrifice uncovered, but for the most part, the Caral were not militaristic, but seemed to be more peaceful and spent much of their time studying the heavens, practicing their religion, and playing musical instruments. Also known as the Norte Chico civilization, the ancient Caral were a pre-Columbian society that lived in what is now Peru, flourishing between the 4th and 3rd millennia BC. They built their first city around 3500 BC, and from then on, they spread and lived in large settlements. But by 1600 BC, the Caral were no longer. One of the biggest mysteries surrounding the Caral society is what caused its collapse. Over 100 people work at the site daily, uncovering its secrets layer by layer. Number 4. The Princess of La Almoloya Almost 4,000 years ago in what is now southeastern Spain, a woman from the Argaric culture was buried with a collection of valuable jewelry, including a silver diadem. She was found with the diadem still on her head when the grave was uncovered. The Argaric people were much wealthier than other cultures in the region and used bronze much earlier than everyone else did. Found at La Almoloya, radiocarbon dating shows that the woman was buried around 1700 BC, surrounded by a treasure trove of jewelry. The sheer amount indicates that she was either a queen or a political personality and ruler in her own right. A new study examining the princess of La Almoloya demonstrates that the treasures indicate that she was a ruler of the surrounding lands where she was laid to rest, and that she may have even been the head of a state. She was buried alongside a man who may have been her consort. This story would be a great one to know more about. His grave was much more simple, and signs indicate that he was a warrior. His skull shows signs of a severe facial injury, and wear on his bones suggests he spent a lot of time on horseback. He was buried first, and the princess was buried a short time after with much splendor. She had bracelets, earlobe plugs, rings, spirals of silver wire, and a silver diadem. It matches six others that were also found on wealthy women found in graves. 
These crowns came down and covered the brow and nose. National Geographic reports that using the price of silver quoted in Mesopotamian records from the time, the archaeologists estimate the grave goods were worth the equivalent today of many tens of thousands of dollars. Other burials and grave goods in the area, including knives and tools, indicate that Argaric females were considered adults as young as age six, much earlier than males, who were thought to reach manhood during their teens. Some females' graves were reopened for the burial of other community members, which was considered a great honor, and royal women's remains show that they ate much more meat than common women, indicating their high level of political power. These types of findings suggest to experts that women may have ruled Argaric communities, but the jury is still out. Number 3. Lost Middle Stone Age Site The region surrounding Kenya's Lake Turkana is a hotbed for fossils left behind by early hominids who lived between 1 and 7 million years ago, including the first members of the Homo genus that we are all members of today. Oddly, however, Middle Stone Age sites dating back between 300,000 and 50,000 years ago are conspicuously lacking in the region. This is the time when modern humans first arose, and there is evidence that they passed through here at some point based on the tools they left behind. Here's where things get interesting. The only documentation of a Middle Stone Age site in Turkana is a PhD dissertation by a graduate student named Allison Kelly, dating back to the early 1990s. Unfortunately, Kelly passed away, and the site's exact location was lost until 2015, when archaeologist Catherine Ranhorn set out to find it. Using Google Earth and Kelly's hand-drawn maps, Ranhorn identified a potential site and mapped the coordinates. She drove to the remote location, feeling uneasy about her guess. Lo and behold, she encountered a site riddled with stone tools, along with four rusty nails just like ones that Kelly had found during her own excavation years earlier. Ranhorn recalled the discovery's excitement in an interview with Discover Magazine, stating it was like reconnecting with Allison Kelly and carrying on the research that she did. Excavations picked up literally where they had left off so long ago. Number 2. Sorceress Kit New discoveries are constantly being made at Pompeii amid ongoing excavations of the vast site, which was buried in ash when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, leaving it virtually frozen in time. In 2019, archaeologists working in the garden house in a section of Pompeii found the remnants of a small wooden box that had rotted over time, with only its bronze hinges surviving. The box's contents consist of around 100 small items that archaeologists said relate to the female world, including tiny skulls, little dolls, two mirrors, necklace pieces, buttons carved from bone, carved scarab beetles, crystals, and miniature phalluses. A press release detailing the peculiar discovery stated that the items may constitute a sorceress kit of sorts, for fortune-telling or to bring good luck. They may have been used in some type of ritual revolving around fertility, pregnancy, omens, or seduction. It's likely that the kit's owner was an inhabitant of the house where it was found, and that they were unable to take the objects with them when they fled, or attempted to flee. Massimo Osana, director general of the archaeological park, said that researchers are working to better understand the kit's meaning and significance. He believes that a servant or slave of the household owned the items, since the team did not find anything particularly valuable among the trinkets, like gold or precious objects. The remains of several people were found within the home, possibly including the box's owner. Scientists announced that they are attempting to determine the individual's kinship ties through DNA analysis, and that the sorceress kit would be cleaned, preserved, and put on display at the Palestra Grande at Pompeii. Number 1. 10 Million Year Old Teeth In recent years, the discovery of two prehistoric hominid-like teeth sparked controversial news headlines claiming that the artifacts stand to rewrite human history. The 9.7 million year old chompers, a canine and an upper molar, were discovered in Eppelsheim, Germany in 2016. They resemble the teeth belonging to Lucy, the famous fossilized Australopithecus afarensis specimen and an ancestor of early humans. But these teeth are 4 million years older than Lucy, and as a result, some reports misconstrued the discovery, claiming that mankind may have evolved in Europe rather than Africa. This simply isn't the case, as National Geographic pointed out in an article cautioning readers against sensationalizing the find. Researchers admitted that the teeth resemble some extinct relatives of modern humans, but they weren't so quick to assume that the discovery meant that we originated out of Europe. 
We want to hold back on speculation, study leader Herbert Lutz explained in a ResearchGate interview, adding that what these finds definitely show us is that the holes in our knowledge and in the fossil record are much bigger than previously thought. It's a complete mystery where this individual came from, and why nobody's ever found a tooth like this somewhere before. One possibility is that the European hominid evolved separately, but similarly to African hominids, resulting in their similar tooth shapes. Known as convergence, this is an evolutionary phenomenon when two creatures independently develop similar features over time. But until they know more about the ever-present gaps in the human family tree, all scientists can do is speculate. Thanks for watching! Which discovery was your favorite? Which one would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!